So with a lot of people having trouble with sales, I figured I'm going to show you some of the items that are selling right now for us and that continually sell all year round. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that sell pretty much all year round. Uh, right now they're selling right this very second. If you sell the right things, your sales will be much better. You just got to be very careful at what you buy if you don't want to fall into those ruts where there's not a lot of sales. If you're selling in flooded categories, it's going to be a lot harder to make a decent return on your investment, a decent ROI. So I tried to pick a broad range of things that will sell for us all year round. And what I'm going to show you today is literally what we sell all year and have for many, many years. There isn't any kind of big drop off or anything else like that. It's steady. It's something that there's enough people looking for that there will be some decent sales on it. Price wise and the return on our investment is huge, 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 because most of these items are viewed as junk or just not desirable to many people for various different reasons. Now, this is a Thord Arson Fly horizontal output voltage transformer. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't a clue what this does, what it belongs in, or anything. My guess is maybe some form of appliance, maybe an old washing machine. I have no clue what this is used for. Didn't matter. There was nothing else like it up. I just put it up in a range of different items that I had no clue on either, and it sat there for almost two years before it sold. Now, people wonder about keeping things up too long. I paid a dollar for this. You minus the fees from that, you can pretty much extrapolate out as it sold for 50 bucks. Now, ROI-wise, that's a huge chunk of ROI. Now, if you go back, and it's probably a little ways until some of my haul videos, this is shown in one of those videos from, uh, like I said, about two years ago or so. I don't care if it sits in the store. And when I bought it, I may have not listed it for six months. So I list them in groups and batches. We set up things to list together. I may wait to get a bunch of merchandise like this, which is exactly what I did at this point. So I'm probably making after fees. Again, this is already sold for 50 bucks. So after fees, after everything is said and done, I'm probably walking out with, geez, maybe 37, 38 bucks out of this one single piece. It's a dollar. The guy I bought it from hadn't a clue. He had a whole bunch of this NOS stuff that he bought when they were doing a buyout at some old business. Now, the biggest aspect and why I said, hey, it's worth listing is that it's new old stock. It's, it's new in the box. It's never been open. So it's a nice item overall, box-wise. It's never been out of there. It's got everything in it, wrapping material. Everything is there. Now, I've talked about a lot of tobacco-related items. This is a tobacco silk. Uh, these would have been issued in uh, boxes of loose-leaf tobacco sometimes. I, I would imagine cigars. Um, but this is for the University of Louisiana. It's their mascot. It's got the cheer on it from the college. There was a set of these for every campus uh, out there in the country that was in existence at this time. I've had other ones. This is a smaller one. There's a bigger example of this. There's even a smaller example of, of this basically same thing here. Some of them show the actual type of sports. I've sold them for baseball, football, track, field, and all that kind of things. I have some in my store. I've shown the sales before. Uh, this one I sold for 40 bucks. Now, it's been up for, again, close to probably 18 months. Now, I don't mind, again, having stuff up. I purchased a big lot of these from somebody. I sunk in 1000 bucks on a, a whole bunch of these. Some of them were stitched into a pillow and things like that as well. We took them apart. We you know, cleaned them the best we could without altering them in any way. And uh, this is the, the end result here. Now, we paid for this purchase probably within the first week or two, I think, of listing the items. I listed them all at once so I could get some multi-sales from different people, get them up quick. I got all my money back. This is all pretty much profit, less eBay fees. The buyer pays shipping on all of my items, so I don't worry about the cost of shipping. We get the discount from eBay with that as well. And from there, I keep the discount 
And with keeping the discount, I get the discount for my account. It's not for my buyer, technically. I don't think that's wrong. They're getting it for the same price they would get it for anywhere else. I use that to cover the fact that eBay charges me a final value fee on the shipping and the tax. So uh, it's pretty much almost about a break even on the shipping aspect of it for me. So I don't lose or gain a thing from the shipping aspect of it. So it's literally just the fees. I think it's like 14.2 or something percent on, on their final value fee on it. So either way, you can figure out the math on that as well. It's a pretty decent profit. Now, I'm not a sports card person in all honesty. Um, I do, though, dabble in the early baseball items from the Victorian era. I've had lots of them, and I do sort them out, but they have to be very specific. This is one of the earliest baseball cards out in, in, in all existence. This is from the Pioneer Age. There are some before this, some scraps they kind of got labeled uh, wrongly, but there are some other ones. This is a base hit, a shortstop. And it's very obviously an early baseball player. These are, again, one of those items where prices can be all over depending on condition and things, depending on advertising on the back. These always sell for us. This has been up for, I want to say, like 16 or 17 months in that range. Now, now we sold it for 75 bucks. You can figure it out based on my actual um, 3X on pricing. You can kind of tell where we're at on that as well. So these have sold for 125 bucks, sometimes two, 225, depending almost on the day of the week and who's online. It just takes the right person for stuff to sell. Now as well with this, I'm telling you, it's taken a long time for some of these items to sell. Again, the ROI in this is horrendous. We've got about a dollar or less into this one here, as well as three other cards from this same series that we have up right now. So with that investment into it and selling it for 75 bucks, the only thing you have to deduct from there would be obviously my eBay fees. Obviously, I pay uh, income tax at the end of the year. It's reported the, hour, the whole work. So you can kind of extrapolate the math out there if you really want to. But I don't mind waiting till I get a better price or the right person is on. I never want to undercut it. This is a decent card. They go for very good money. Now, I could have also let this sit for a little while longer and taken 125 or maybe even a little higher than that but i'm fine with this i've got almost nothing into it i'm not greedy to the point where it's all going to sit here forever i'm a little more opened on offers and things like that with the economy and stuff just to be safe so i'm not really worried on taking a 50 buck plus profit on something that's been sitting around that i have almost nothing into now i love music music posters and music related items we happened upon some uh, massive amounts of advertising posters from some record stores and things around here that went under. So these are some that have been in inventory a little while. They were just listed within the last, I want to say, like 40 days. And we sell a fairly large amount of them for a decent price. A good thing about this is they're semi-replenishable. I have others in inventory. You can see I've got quantity of a lot of these. This one went for $27.50, I do believe, plus shipping. I bought them in huge bulk, so I have about a nickel, literally a nickel, into these. I actually paid by the pound. I bought 50 pounds, basically, worth of these at one time. And I actually bought more after that, once I dug through them and stuff. It was a, a you know, 50 bucks, take it or leave it kind of thing. That's my price, no quibble. You take it, it's yours, get out of here, you're done. That was basically the offer that I was given. Now, I only looked through a few of these before I actually purchased it. There were some REM posters in there, some early ones that were just in black and white, really generic, and I knew they were early enough to make it worth the while. But we had sold some other ones from another purchase, from another one of these uh, buy-up type of people who buy out stores and things like that. So it's a good way to purchase is if you're not aware of that. Collectors for items like this, fans of groups, fans of certain things, they buy it all year round. Summer or not, if you've got the right item, something they've been looking for, a collector's going to buy it. Just like listing the multiples sometimes when I have them up here. I'm listing that I have many of these for sale because it should be enough draw to sell many of these items. Some of the ones we've already listed, we've sold multiples already. Specifically the REM, the first one I saw in there that I felt was worth some decent money. We've already made our money back, as I said, so this is an excellent way to, to still have revenue coming in. This is a fairly quick sale, too. As I said, it's only been up for a very limited amount of time. Now, this is from a record store as well. This is a record album-shaped and sized 
uh, advertising piece. This would slide into the cabinets where the records were stored, like a front advertising piece is what this is. Sometimes you'd see them hanging from a wall also. And this one sold for the full price to someone overseas who also spent almost 20 bucks to ship it to them as well. So they spent 54 bucks shipped on this item. Again, they're paying shipping from overseas, so I have nothing else to worry about in there. I have literally nothing into this at this point. Again, it was a multi-purchase by the pound on this one. This one came in that same purchase. I even got some Beatles in that that uh, purchase as well, which should do extremely well. I've got many more of these here. South of Heaven, one of their, their best songs. If you know who Testament is, you probably know that song. But uh, excellent sale here, and I still have more to go. Another one here. This is The Last Shadow Puppets. I believe we got $27.50 as well. We've been running sales or sending out offers at a certain amount, and that's what most of the offers on these have been. Photos aren't even so great, but the main image looks just fine, so that was the big push for it. I don't honestly know what they sing, what they do personally. Uh, I should probably look them up, but with all the quantity of these sorts of posters we got, and we just have not had time. So another good sale on these posters. Now, this is just a few examples. We sell them all the time. If you know who to ask, most record stores have tons of this stuff in the back, especially if they're a big one. If you, you know or, or have some of the local buyers who purchased this from them, if, if somebody's already doing that, you might be able to track them down as well. Uh, if a business goes under, that's always a place to check out, no matter what they sell. Now, another area that I've made some phenomenal amounts of profits on, again, it's going to take a lot of skill or a lot of time to learn some of these other areas. But if you're willing to invest the time, the, the return on your investment of that time is going to be horrendously huge. These are areas that I never knew about until I invested the time to figure them out. I invested the money as well to be able to identify a lot of these. Now, this is an early hard rubber button, and most people may not understand what that is. That's basically like vulcanized rubber. Goodyear came up with the first versions of these buttons in 1849. That's the first patent for buttons made out of this. It replaced using horn, cow horn, and things like that as button material. So in 1851, Goodyear advanced it to this level, and this is just a, another manufacturer making the same vulcanized rubber, basically, on this one. Many people may think it's not worth it because it's rubber. It's cheap looking. But these go back to the 1850s, many of these. This style goes for more than the brass fancy buttons in some areas. Now, I had a round table with five other resellers on my channel. We got to the topic of yacht club buttons. This is just an example. Because of that conversation, I thought I would throw this one in here. Quaker City Yacht Club, hard rubber, as you can see, vulcanized rubber, basically. And this one went for $34 and some change. This was up about six months. Now, we spent roughly $14,000 on a massive assortment of clothing buttons. And we honestly have already paid for that months and months and months ago, very shortly after we acquired it. Now, transportation is a huge area that we do extremely well in. Now, this is Ferries and Cliff House Railway. Some of you, if you live in the San Francisco area, probably know what Cliff House is. Uh, it's a very historic place. It's been redone for various reasons. This one and two more I'm going to show you, we sold for a combined price of $171, plus they paid combined shipping on them. Now, you can figure out the fees, roughly, what, 14% off of $171. I literally, at this point, have zero into them because the whole lot was paid for very quickly within about two two and a half months that's how long it took us to recoup fourteen thousand plus dollars out of the buttons from that point on it's all been profit less ebay fees so here's another one san francisco municipal railway this one sold fairly cheap i have another one here we've sold other ones it's not super super valuable but again we sold it for 171 dollars with the other two buttons this one being the second one and this one being the third one. This is the Market Street Cable Railway in San Francisco. Now, to do good in stuff like this, you're going to have to buy some expensive books. The books that cover railways and stuff, these exact type of buttons, the whole set of three books has been out of print. The person who did them has since passed. They are very scarce books, but they are still out there. It may cost you some money. All told, you could have to invest five or six hundred dollars 
into a set of books to be able to identify these items. So it's not for the faint of heart to invest time and energy into these items. But what happens with these items, if you do invest it, it'll all pay for itself. You will recoup the money if you can acquire quantity of these sorts of items. If you only run into a few of them here and there, don't invest money into any of that sort of thing. You will waste it because you won't have enough volume coming in to recoup the cost on it. But the biggest aspect on these items for us is they sell all year round without issue. Collectors collect. If the rare item comes up at a specific time, they are all set ready to go. Now with this purchase as well, we've only listed a few percentages of the entire purchase. We bought around 575 pounds of uniform and clothing buttons basically. So if you're inquisitive, you like history and things like that, a lot of the items that are gonna sell all year round will need some investigative skills of yours to do well in them. You're not just gonna walk out there and be able to score on stuff like I see a lot of people talking. If you wanna play in this stuff, you've gotta invest time, money, and energy. I can tell you right now, but for us, once you get all that stuff down or you have the right books, you have the right information to look up stuff, you're good as gold. You don't have to invest any more into those areas. They only made so many of these types of items. They're not making them anymore. They haven't for 100 plus years. So as long as you figure out this type of stuff, you never have to worry about new stuff coming in and messing up the market. A lot of these items too, there are no reproductions out there. So there's very little risk on anything else like that. Again, collectors collect. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. in the second house look like again? Why trust it to memory when you can trust it to Polaroid Instant Pictures?